Within the game Stardew Valley exists seven hidden collectibles called Star Drops, all of which are obtained in different ways. Some Star Drops are relatively simple to obtain, such as the Star Drop at floor 100 of the mines, the Star Drop sold by Krobus for 20k gold, and the Star Drop obtained by giving Old Master Cannoli a sweet gem berry. Other Star Drops are more complicated. One requires getting married and getting two and a half hearts of affinity beyond that, and all the gifting and item quests that entails. Another requires catching every fish, even the legendary fish, the fish on Ginger Island, and difficult fish like the octopus and the lava eel. Another requires completing the museum, submitting 53 minerals and 42 artifacts, most of which are very easy, but others like the dinosaur egg, the strange dolls, and the fossil artifacts are much harder to get. Finally, there is the star drop you buy at the Stardew Valley Fair for 2,000 tokens. This is among the easiest, but since it is tied to a festival on Fall 16, this is the star drop that sets the earliest day that all star drops can be attained by. In addition, as this run is more complex than the unseated community center run, the rules are more relaxed, and as such I will be seeding the save file, using the traveling carts, and even using Blade's map predictor. However, I will not be dynamic seeding. How do you get all 7 star drops by Fall 16? The challenge starts before day 1 even begins. The seed used for this run is 360 507 666, which is exclusively used for day 1. However, for this seed to take effect, the RNG of the game needs to be set up for it. This means playing on the forest farm, having standard bundles, and a standard mines reward, because using other options advances the RNG in undesirable ways. The hard part is that the character in the character creator blinking also advances the RNG, so I need to enter the seed, character details, and farm type before he blinks. This farmer is called D, short for Richard. Today, the first thing I do is head down to the Cinesap Forest. This is because the combination of seed and RNG setup gets me two artifacts that are guaranteed. I get a palm fossil from the forest, and then get a trilobite fossil from the beach. The trilobite is the only artifact that can only be obtained from artifact spots, and the palm fossil is also very difficult to get. I get these immediately to verify that I correctly set up the game's RNG. After submitting these artifacts for extra day one money and talking to Marnie to manipulate the quest board, I clear the farm to plant and water the 15 parsnips, then chop trees to craft a chest for the farm and a chest for the mines. Finally, I end the day collecting mixed seeds, which will have a special purpose later in the game. Just like Unseated Community Center, I spend days 2, 3, and 4 fishing, as this is the best money making strategy this early in the game for me. I sell my fish at noon and 4pm, and with the help of the money from the archaeology quest, I buy the fiberglass rod today instead of day 3. I then fish until my inventory is full, and meet Shane at the saloon so that I can get an item quest for him tomorrow. Shane is chosen as the marriage candidate for this run, as his birthday takes place before the flower dance, making it easier to take advantage of that festival for extra hearts. In addition, loved gifts and loved quality gifts are easier to get for Shane compared to Haley. I start by getting an item quest for Shane. He wants an eel. It is already in my route to get an eel today, so this will be easy. I then fish at the lake until my inventory is full, then head to the ocean to buy more bait from Willy and fish up the eel. I fish a second eel in case Shane wants another one, then fulfill the quest for affinity and money. I end the day going back to the lake to fish some more, reaching level 5 fishing and picking the profession that makes fish sell for more. First thing I do today is head to Willy's to sell my fish. I don't fish anything else during this time, as I have a full inventory. With 2500G in my pocket I buy the backpack upgrade then fish in the lake until 6.30pm, where I head to the saloon to buy Shane a beer, before returning to the lake to fish until I pass out. Almost immediately, I get lucky and get a dinosaur egg and an amphibian fossil. I had planned on getting those items from dino floors and dedicated fishing days, 
so getting these artifacts here is very beneficial. I start by harvesting the parsnips for use in the mines before preparing the farming area for kale. I start and skip the community center opening cutscene, look at the scroll inside, then buy 21 kale seeds. These are to get farming XP with the least amount of watering, but once I get level 2, I'm not growing any more crops for money. I just want level 2 to be able to craft sprinklers for reasons. The kale is planted by 9.30am, so I bring some food and my second chest to the mines and begin descending. I make it to floor 25 by midnight and get a handful of gems and dwarf scrolls. After watering the kale, I bring my gems and artifacts to the museum to clear my inventory, then go back to the mines to descend further until I hit floor 40 at 3pm where I go to the saloon to buy Shane his second beer of the week. With Shane sufficiently liquored up, it's back to the mines where I reach floor 45 then grind for copper to be able to upgrade my tools, ending the day by passing out with 10 copper bars. Today I have access to floors 5, 15, 25, 35 and 45 which are all good floors for a strategy called elevatoring where you use the elevator to repeatedly reset these floors and mine the stones on the tiles where they will drop geodes. However, I was unable to find good geode tiles on these floors which I confirmed by searching with Blade's map predictor. However, I found two good tiles if I have the geologist profession which gives a chance for gems and geodes to appear in pairs and has the added effect of changing the geode tiles. As such, I spent today farming for iron so that I can get mining XP from the iron nodes and get iron for sprinklers at the same time. I end the day passing out with 18 iron bars worth of iron. I bring my geodes and gems with me to the mines and spend half a day farming for iron before heading to Clint's at midday. I crack half of my geodes, submit the minerals to the museum, then crack the rest of my geodes. This is done in a specific order to ensure most of the items obtained are new minerals. With 2000G from leftover minerals, I upgrade my pickaxe, then retrieve 400G from my quest menu to buy Shane another beer. I check my mail and find that Shane has given me a pizza, which saves me from buying him a second beer this week as I can give him his pizza instead. Once I get Shane drunk on his way out of work, I chop some more trees to craft two more chests, scythe away some weeds for mixed seeds for future endeavours, then gather my furnaces, ores and coal ready for a fishing day tomorrow. However, as I am at the mines with a fishing rod, I spend some time fishing at the lake at floor 20 where I catch a stone fish and a ghost fish. Then with it being too late to head home, I fish up one last fish where I get an artifact. Today is a rain day, so I spend all day fishing. While I plan on getting my money from geodes, I need a high fishing level to be able to catch the legend and the other legendary fish, and a high fishing level will make catching hard fish easier. While I fish, I smelt my ore, and I gift Shane a suspiciously familiar pizza as he walks to work in the rain. The treasure I get today is quite lucky. I get a Nautilus fossil, which is a hard to get artifact, and I also get a Neptune sword, which is a neat find, but not as game changing as getting it before Spring 5. The first thing I do today is go to the forest to find an ancient doll before submitting this and a few other gems and artifacts to the museum, getting my copper pickaxe from Clint and giving him my axe to upgrade to copper. Then I spend the rest of the day farming iron then farming copper, reaching level 5 mining right before the day ends and getting the geologist profession for double geodes. The first thing I do today is harvest my kale. This gets me level 2 farming so that I can craft sprinklers and the kale itself is decent food for the mines. Then I set up my furnaces next to the elevator and begin elevatoring. What this entails is loading floors with geode tiles close to the elevator, mining stones that appear on those tiles then returning to floor 0 to reset those floors. In my case, I am resetting floors 25 and 45, looking for Omni Geodes and Frozen Geodes respectively. This trick is called Elevatoring because I use the elevator a lot, and this strategy is boring as hell. Not only that, but because of all the pausing required to make this strategy optimal, 
This one day takes an hour to complete, whereas a day takes 40 minutes without pausing and usually takes 20 minutes with an average amount of pausing. I end the day with 149 Omni Geodes and 125 Frozen Geodes. Another day spent in the elevator to hell, but I take a break at 9 to open my geodes. I need to rush the bus repair to be able to convert Omni Geodes into Troves, which can be forced to output treasure chests, pearls, and gold pumpkins. And this time is the most convenient for submitting geode minerals to the museum for that star drop. After 33 real life minutes opening geodes, I have 24,000 G with an extra 12,000 G worth of unsmelted gold ore, iridium ore, and miscellaneous items. And I have a crystallarium, though I don't plan on getting more. I buy the Joja membership for 5,000 G, then return to the elevator to hell, smelting my ores while I swing my pickaxe a lot, ending the day with 80 Omni Geodes and Frozen Geodes. Demetrius has been keeping watch on my bank account, and has seen that I've made over 25,000 G, so he pays me a visit to offer me a choice between a bat cave and a mushroom cave. However, this reveals a mistake I made all the way at the first day of the run. I was supposed to talk to, me to Demetrius then, so that when this cutscene happened, Shane would still be the most recently met NPC. Now that Demetrius is my most recently met NPC, this will influence what item quests I get. Fortunately, I get the same number of item quests with Shane, and the math works out to give me more quests for him in the middle of, of summer, though I hope to not need them. I get the Batcave, but it won't make much of a difference in the run. Then, after a full day of Hellevatoring, I end the day with 230 Omni Geodes, 210 Frozen Geodes, and 5 Diamonds from Gem Nodes. This is the last day in which I ride the elevator to Hell. I leave at 9 to open my Geodes, but I only open them until I have 75,000 G, enough to buy the Bus Repair and the Greenhouse Repair. I buy the Greenhouse Repair expecting to be able to do a certain trick tomorrow, then end the day farming for more geodes, getting 270 Omni Geodes and 110 Frozen Geodes. My plan to start today was to manipulate mixed seeds in the greenhouse to get a hot pepper seed planted on a tile that would get me a gold hot pepper on Shane's birthday. However, it turns out that in spring, mixed seeds in the greenhouse only give spring crops, and the feature of mixed seeds giving any season seeds in winter in the greenhouse is limited to winter only despite the greenhouse being an all-season location year-round. As such, I decide to forego the idea of giving Shane a quality birthday gift and go straight to the river fishing spot to fish catfish. I give Shane a jade to fulfill an item quest as he walks to work, before buying the bus repair and buying Shane a beer at midday, before returning to the fishing spot to fish for the rest of the night. Like before, this is primarily for fishing XP, but the money I get from selling today's fish will allow me to buy the minecart repair tomorrow. I start today chopping trees and stumps. I need 450 wood to buy the house upgrade to be able to get married. And I need 300 wood to fix the bridge to the right side of the beach where the mermaid's pendant is bought from. In addition, I need 200 hardwood to repair Willie's boat. Then I go to the desert for the first time to buy exactly 28 artifact troves from the desert trader and fish up a sandfish. I try to fish the scorpion cup, but without the trap bobber, I find it too difficult, so therefore I leave. Then I buy the minecart repair and give Shane a beer and a green algae for an item quest. After donating my artifacts to the museum and getting the three triple shot espressos and melon seeds from there, I finish the day chopping even more trees. I start by chopping these stumps for hardwood before chopping trees until I have the wood I need then go to Clint to open my geos and artifact troves. Artifact troves have a low chance of giving treasure chests, pearls and golden pumpkins, but with the Stardew Predictor it is possible to open these troves and geodes to guarantee each artifact trove gets me what I need. In addition, I maximize the amount of gold, iridium and valuable geode minerals like star shards I get from the rest of the my Omni geodes, and as such, I leave Clint with 10,000 G, 90,000 G worth of treasures, and 11,000 G worth of unsmelted ore, 111,000 G in total. With this done, I don't have anything left to do for today other than descend further in the mines. However, to improve my ability to descend quickly, 
I use Blaze Map Predictor to know exactly which stones will give me ladders, but I nevertheless am slowed by a couple dud floors and monster floors, and as such end the day having made it to floor 65. I start the day by repairing the beach bridge, talk to Shane on his way to work, and buy the iridium rod, extra baits, trap bobbers, trout soup, and crab pots from Willy. Notably, the crab pots are needed because the crab pot fish count as fish needed to get the fishing star drop. Then I buy the bridge repair, buy the house upgrade from Robin, smelt some more ore, and return to the desert pond with my new fishing rod and trap bobbers to catch that scorpion carp. First try. Then I go to floor 60 in the mines to catch the ice pip. First try once again. Then I go to the sewers to catch the mutant carp. Once again, first try. With that done, I go to the lake to fish once again, to fish until I get level 9. This is because it is raining tomorrow, and with level 9 fishing plus the boost from the trout soup I got from Willy, I will have the level 10 fishing that is needed to catch the legend. Today, my steel axe is ready, but first, I have a legend to catch. It takes two in-game hours, and I catch the legend first try. Then I get the steel axe by the panning upgrade from Joja to complete the whole community center development project, talk to Shane, Go to the desert to till up a golden mask artifact before returning to the farm to farm more hardwood. With my new steel axe I can chop the hardwood logs, which are one time sources of hardwood but drop a lot more than the stumps, totaling about half of my overall hardwood needs. On the way to the secret woods, I stop by the travelling cart. I buy a potato to be able to craft a dish over the sea for better fishing, and four rare seeds to grow into sweet gem berries over the following four weeks. On my way through the secret woods, I fish up a wood skip, then plant and water the rare seeds before making my way to the crab pot I placed yesterday. I get a mussel, shrimp and lobster, then leave, forgetting to bait the crab pots for tomorrow. I end the day by getting the forester profession which gets me more wood from trees, but also more hardwood from stumps. I till up a chicken statue, chop stumps at the farm and secret woods, watch the Joja completion cutscene, bait the crab pots, which I place in specific tiles to attempt to guarantee catching the remaining saltwater crab pot items, then buy Shane a birthday beer. Then I return to the mines, and I have one goal, reach the bottom. It is currently 2pm, and I have to go down 115 floors. Can I do it? Well, the answer is easily yes, as I use Blade's map predictor to know exactly which stones will produce ladders. I go ladder by ladder, using my stone to staircase my way past monster floors on floor 68, 97 and 101. I even get a squid ink, which will let me craft a seafoam pudding once I get a midnight cup. I make it to the bottom at 12.40am, opting to stop here and not floor 115, as I plan on doing skull cavern attempts soon, and I would rather go straight into skull caverns than start that day with the regular mines. I start by chopping stumps before heading to the beach to collect from my crab pots. I get an oyster and a cockle, leaving just a crab, and crab drops from rock crabs do not count for this. Then I catch two sardines to cook a dish of the sea, submit the two artifacts to the museum, then farm omnigios in the mines. I only need enough to buy a few desert warp totems, and once I have them I go to the desert to buy spicy eels, desert totems, staircases and a coffee. Then I buy salads from the saloon, along with the hash browns recipe, a couple of oils from Pierre, then use the rest of my money to buy stone for staircases, getting a cool hat from Willy along the way. Then I end the day farming for stone in the mines. Today is my first day in Skull Cavern. To get the most that I can out of today, I am using the map predictor to know which stones will drop ladders, staircasing past floors that are monster floors, or would take too long due to not having any ladder stones. The one thing I'm looking for in Skull Caverns today are batteries. Five batteries are needed to repair Willy's boat, 
and the easiest way to get them, lightning rods, are not usable in spring as it never thunders in spring of year one. This means that I need to find another way to get batteries early, and there are a few ways of getting them. The travelling cart, gifts from Pam, and Iridium bats. The cart doesn't always have batteries, and it turns out that in the entirety of spring, the cart only sells one on my seed. Getting batteries from Pam requires meeting her, which makes it harder to get quests for Shane. And this leaves me with the last option, Iridium Bats. Iridium Bats spawn in Skull Caverns on floors 51 and up, and also on prehistoric floors, with a greater frequency on floors that are multiples of 20. In other words, 60, 80, 120, and so on. The issue is that batteries have a 5% drop rate from bats, so to complete the boat, you need to kill on average 100 Iridium Bats. In addition, a quarter of floors cannot spawn bats on them due to being mummy floors, and non-mummy floors, if they spawn bats at all, usually only spawn one or two bats. I end the Skull Caverns attempt with a prehistoric rib artifact and 11,000 G worth of ir iridium, and decide to keep the day despite getting no batteries, as it took nearly two hours real time to descend Skull Caverns checking the map predicted on every floor and I have a backup plan if I do not get all the batteries I need by summer. Leaving Skull Caverns at 10.30pm, I take a quick trek to the beach to harvest my crab pots. One of them gets me a crab, which means I am done with saltwater crab pots, so I move them to the farm to catch the freshwater catchables, snails, crayfish and periwinkles. My crab pots have given me two periwinkles, so it is just snails and crayfish left. The rest of today is about preparation for the next Skull Caverns day. I smelt the rest of my ore, submit my prehistoric rib, sell some iridium bars, go to the desert to convert my prismatic shard into a galaxy sword, give Shane a pizza before spending the rest of the day tilling soil. I till soil because I have a chance of getting a rusty spoon and a skeletal tail, and I get both by the end of the day. In the middle of this, I visit the saloon to buy salads and the triple shot espresso recipe. I end the day trying to get the Dwarf Scroll 2 artifact, but pass out without getting it. My crab pots have produced a crayfish and a snail, which means that I am finished with the crab pot fish. The flower dance starts at 9, but access to the event is available for another 5 hours after that, and I decide to use this time farming for the final Dwarf Scroll. This takes less time than I expect, so I clear the quarry visit the desert to till up a golden relic artifact, and trade with the trader for spicy eels and desert warp totems. With nothing left to do, I head to the flower dance. This event lets you dance with a marriage candidate, which gets you one full heart of friendship. Four hearts of friendship is needed to do this though, which is why I chose an NPC with an earlier birthday. Once Shane is all danced out, I go to bed. Note that Shane now has 8 out of 8 hearts of friendship. Day number 2 in Skull Caverns. However, via the map predictor I know that there is a skeletal hand in the backwoods, so I take a 10 minute detour to get it, then warp to the desert as normal. Making my way floor by floor, ladder by ladder, I get a prehistoric femur from a pepper rex, then get a prehistoric vertebra from another one. With the rib from last time and the dinosaur egg from really early on in the run, I now have every artifact that can come from Skull Caverns. On floor 36, I bomb a bunch of mummies and get a single piece of cloth. This is potentially a mistake, as it triggers a cutscene with Emily, but this is a problem for future me. On floor 58, I find an iridium node on a tile that will cause it to drop a prismatic shard. Then on floor 77, I get a second shard. Realising that today is the day that the desert trader sells magic rock candy for 3 prismatic shards, an item that gives plus 5 luck. I decide that if I get a third prismatic shard, I will leave early to get the magic rock candy for the third attempt at Skull Caverns. On the floor 100 guaranteed treasure chest, I get a rain totem, and I decide that I will use this to guarantee a full rain day for the walleye, just like in the last run. Then on floor 114, I get a third prismatic shard, and on floor 119, the purple haze appears, which means higher spawns of bats and serpents where I get lucky and get a battery. Knowing how hard it is to get them, 
I am happy with getting a single battery today. I try floor 120, but get no more batteries, so I decide to leave, buy the magic rock candy from the desert trader, smelt some of my iridium ore, and go to bed. Today is the day where the traveling cart sells batteries. However, I start by smelting ore and donating 7 artifacts to the museum, taking some of the rewards to decorate the mines a bit. After selling some iridium bars, I gift Shane a gold wild plum. Even though he is maxed out at 8 hearts, he isn't actually maxed out of friendship points. This is because the limit is actually 1 point less than the next heart threshold. In other words, the limit now is actually 8 hearts, plus 249 points of affinity. And the gold liked item plus the conversation is sufficient to max Shane out for real. Then I buy the battery, putting me at 3 left to obtain to reach Ginger Island. After buying salads and coffees, as well as parsnip seeds for Ginger Island, and using the rest of my money to buy even more stone, I spend the rest of the day farming duggies and skeletons for a chewing stick and prehistoric serapula respectively. But I get neither, so I go to bed after setting up my inventory for tomorrow. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Since it was raining yesterday, I didn't get the Emily cutscene until today. However, I am able to avoid meeting her by skipping the cutscene immediately, so my mistake has no negative outcome. Today is the third day at Skull Cavern, and if I don't get the last three batteries today, I will be resorting to my plan B, which is manipulating a thunderstorm in the first few days of summer. My first treasure chest on floor 57 gets me 4 quality sprinklers, which will help a bit later. Floor 80 is a bat floor and helps me get the first battery of the day. A full half day goes by until I get my second battery on floor 156, with 4 hours left in the day. The last battery I get on floor 167 right after midnight. I leave shortly after and head straight to the beach, and with 10 minutes left in the day, I till up the anchor artifact, then pass out right after. Two hundred hardwood, five iridium bars, and now five batteries. Today is primarily about fixing Willy's boat and setting up my inventory for Ginger Island. While waiting for Willy's shop to open, I gather items from my chests and smelt ore, then repair the boat. After donating the anchor, I buy the final backpack upgrade to more easily ferry items to Ginger Island. Then I buy a hash brown to cook another dish over the sea fish up two sardines, sell even more iridium bars, buy spicy eels and triple shot espressos from the desert trader, buy wood to make a chest, donate another artifact to the museum and get the cauliflower seeds and pumpkin seeds for Ginger Island. Then I use the rest of my money to buy salads as I do not want to run out while on the island. Forgetting about the 1000G boat ticket, I spend the rest of my money on more salads then go to bed. Today is a very busy day. I want to get to Ginger Island and get enough golden walnuts to fix the island farmhouse so that I can sleep there. In addition, as I forgot to leave 1000G for the boat ride, I need to sell an item to get the money, and the easiest way to do this is to sell an iridium bar to Clint. While waiting, I till up a glass shards artifact and donate it. With 1000G in my pocket, I quickly shove a spicy eel and coffee in my gob and run to Willy's shop and patiently take the boat ride to the island. On the island, my route boils down to three words, east, north, west. I put spare items in a chest by the entrance to the, to the island farm and head east to, to the jungle. I get the nut bush, then go to the hidden area on the right. In this area is a nut bush and four pillars that you can put gems on. Normally, this puzzle involves looking for birds on rare rain days, but by using the Stardew Predictor website, I know ahead of time which gems to use, and in which order. Then I go into Leo's house, get a nut from hitting his tree with an axe, and giving his parrots a nut to unlock the north part of the island. With the east done, I head to the north section. I get 11 gold walnuts here. Most of them are either nut bushes or obtained from tilling special tiles. Notably, however, the eighth is obtained from hitting a tree with a slingshot, and this is the only time in the run I use the slingshot at all. With the north done is just the west side left. I start with the top half, 
getting a nut from a till spot, three from nut bushes, and one from the till spot in this tiger slime area. Killing all the slimes gets me a nut, and there is a short path to another bush. Near Key's nut room is another two bushes, and there's another hidden to the right of where Booty spawns. I can't actually do her quest as the first person involved is not available until the next year. Then I till two spots before getting the whack-a-mole nut. This is easy, all that is needed is putting a path item on three holes before whacking the little guy on the fourth. There's a till spot on the right hand side of the beach and I mine the muscle note that I know has a nut in it. With all this done, I have enough nuts to fix the farmhouse with three left over. All that is left is to clear the farming area to plant the parsnips and sprinklers, and I finish the day with all of the seeds planted with a sprinkler to spare. The parsnips are just for the nuts obtained from harvesting crops, and the melons are for the Gourmet Frog's Gold Walnuts, totaling 10 for the melons and wheat, the latter being planted later due to its shorter grow time. I end the day pushing my tropical bed across the house to the entrance so I can leave faster. Having slept on the island, my next course of action is the first run through the volcano. Nuts in the volcano are obtained in the following ways. 5 come from stones, 5 come from monsters, 5 come from crates, 1 comes from common chests, and 1 comes from rare chests. However, before I go in, there are two nuts obtained by going left at the Lava River. In the volcano itself, I take screenshots of each level to look for chests, dense clusters of stones, crates and buttons. I run right through level 1, pick up three dragon's teeth in level 2, another tooth from level 3, and a golden walnut from a stone in level 4. Notably, level 4 is the first level to have buttons, and it is very useful to not need to search for them. Level 5 is where the Volcano Dwarf is, but they do not sell anything useful to me. Level 6 gets me nothing, level 7 gets me 4 nuts from stones, but I was not keeping track that closely at the time. Level 8 also gets me nothing. Level 9 is a unique floor, as it is almost guaranteed to have a rare chest. The layout today is one in which I have to go up to the left side to unlock the door to the rare chest on the right side. I get a nut from a crate and a nut from the rare chest. The Volcano Caldera has two nut bushes, and I decide not to use the forge today. On my way back from the volcano, I get a nut from one of the slimes on the bottom floor, then spend 10 nuts to fix the bridge to the dig site. The dig site has 17 nuts that can be obtained, 3 from nut bushes, 1 from a till spot, 11 from handing in different bones to the island field office, and two from completing both surveys. I get a fossilized rib and a fossilized leg from two bone nodes, then go to the island field office to donate them and complete both island surveys. There are 22 purple flowers and 18 purple starfish. Then I get a nut from a muscle node and a nut from the shipwreck. I get the nut in the till spot just north of Birdie, which only unlocks after reading the relevant journal notes. Returning to the dig site at the end of the night, I get the nuts in the till spot and the three from the nut bushes. Then, with little else to do, I spend the rest of the night fishing, where I catch two super cucumbers and a snake skull, and ship some of my items to save space, then go to bed. First thing I do today is get the nuts from the nut bush in the tiger slime area that I missed in the last two days. Then I get a gold coconut from a tree. I need two, as one gives me a nut, and one gives me the fossilized skull for the field office. I till two empty tiles, and then till both artifact spots on the farm. Artifact spots on Ginger Island also depend on the till count, just like tilling clay from empty tiles in Saudi Valley, which means that I am able to manipulate these artifact spots to give me one snake vertebrae each. Then I get a mummified frog from the weeds in the jungle, and another fossilized leg and a prehistoric skull artifact from bone nodes. I take my hat off and use it to pan until I get the fossilized tail while fishing for the fossilized spine. Turning in these items gets me four nuts, then I go to the volcano for a second time. 
I get two nuts from enemies on level 1, a mummified bat from a stone on level 6, and a nut from a common chest on the same level. Then at the forge, I enchant my pickaxe to have no energy drain, and my sword to do extra damage. On my way back home, I donate the bats for a single nut, then plant my tarot tubers so that when they are fully grown, I can trade them for farm warp totems. Then I go to bed. Today, I know that a second gold coconut has spawned in a tree in Island North. I start by telling the till spot at the very edge of the beach, unlocked by the journal nose, then get the gold coconut from the tree. Then I spend 20 nuts to fix the island resort, which unlocks the path to island southwest. One nut comes from fishing in the starfish pool, one comes from the till spot, and one comes from a till spot inside the pirate's cave. While here, I get two nuts from fishing while I fish up the stingray, then leave once I get it, returning to Stardew Valley. At the town, I crack open the gold coconuts for the nuts and the fossilized skull, then donate the prehistoric skull. At Pierre's shop, I buy wheat seeds for the gourmand frog, pepper seeds to get affinity for Shane quicker, and a couple speed grow to accelerate the growth of the wheat. Then I get my sap from home to make fertilizer to boost the quality of the old peppers, then get my extra trap bobbers, sell some extra iridium bars to Clint, then return to Ginger Island. After planting the wheat and making a second chest for extra items, I head to the island field office, submitting the fossilized skull for 6 nuts and finishing the whole collection. Then I fish up a blue discus from the river in Island West, then fish in the ocean for 2 nuts and catch a lionfish. After selling some items, I decide to head to the pirate's cave to get the 3 nuts from darts. I win my first game in 11 throws, my second in 8 throws and my third in 10 throws. Easy! Then I fix the island trader post, fix the island mailbox, and fish midnight cups, which are very useful for making seafoam puddings. Then I go to bed. I start by clearing out the rest of the farm area, get two nuts from muscle nodes, then use a farm totem to get back home. I want my pickaxe to be iron for the nuts under the boulder, so I give it to Clint to be upgraded, buying speed growth for the melons on the way. Returning to the island, I finish the Parrot Express transportation system and head to the Volcano Caldera to fish up the lava eel. I could have fished it in the mines, but the bite rate is higher here, making it a better use of my bobbers and food. Of course, I catch it first try. Then I enter the volcano for the last few nuts there. I get one from a slime at the entrance, one from a crate on level 5, one from a magma sprite and one from a crate on level 6. Then I decide to leave before I pass out, going to bed right before midnight. By now, I am almost done with getting nuts to open Key's nut room, and I have decided to forego the melons and wheat in favour of getting the five nuts from the mermaid. This requires it to rain on the island, and I am still saving my rain totem for a rain day in fall. I start by harvesting the parsnips, and am lucky to get all five harvesting nuts halfway through but I harvest the rest for completeness, applying the speed grow to some melons on the way. With the parsnips harvested, I plant my hot pepper seeds and fertilize them to get more gold quality hot peppers. With that done, I head back home and cook a sea foam pudding for later. Now that I am done with nuts on the island until my pickaxe is done and I get a rain day, I spend the rest of today fishing, catching a rainbow trout, pike, puffer fish, red mullet, dorado, sturgeon, and an ancient sword artifact. Then I use my seafoam pudding to catch the crimson fish, and catch it first try. With fishing done until I get rain, I buy some tom car soup to boost gold crop output from farming, and buy some extra coffee. Then I spend the rest of the night farming for the chewing stick and prehistoric scapula, but get neither. As I'm waiting for it to rain on the island, I decide to spend today grinding for artifacts. However, I have determined that the three artifacts I'm still waiting for from artifact spots can be obtained by opening three artifact troves and two geodes. I donate the ancient sword, get my iron pickaxe, and go to the mines to ride the elevator to hell. However, this time I only want 15 omni geodes, so I only spend four real life minutes 
and get a squid ink in the process. I go to the desert, buy three artifact troves, then open them in a specific order to get the chewing stick, Elvis Jewelry, and Chips Amphora. At this point, all I need now is the prehistoric scapula and the two strange dolls. Then I donate these items and get the magic rock candy as a reward. Depending on the first key quest, this magic rock candy could be very useful. With nothing else to do, I spend the rest of the day grinding skeletons for the prehistoric scapula, then go to bed. Today turns out to be raining on the island and the mainland at the same time. I head to the beach using a beach totem, and while waiting for Louise to shop to open, I take some time to fish up the red snapper. To save resources, I make sure to remove the bobber. Turns out, the first fish I caught was an octopus. Not only did I catch it first try, but I did it without the trap bobber or food buffs. Then, I catch the red snapper and take the boat to Ginger Island. First thing I do is go to the dig site, where it turns out that one of the bone nose has a prehistoric scapula in it. Then, I go to the mermaid. You are supposed to place all five flute box simultaneously so you can run across them but you can use the same flute block by churning it, running across, then picking up the flute block and placing it on the next tile. This isn't easy though, as you have to make sure to run across it completely, so that you do not trigger it twice, which fails the puzzle, making you restart it. Once I complete the puzzle, I head to Key's Nut Room, getting the nuts under the boulder on the way. Checking the quest board, one of the quests is to complete four prismatic shards, I already have 9. Within 10 seconds, I have completed the Keys Nut Room quest, got on 40 key gems, bought 160 magic bait, and left. First thing I do with my new bait is head to the left side of the leftmost pier on the beach, where the magic bait will allow the night market fish to bite. I catch a blobfish, albacore, spookfish, sea cucumber, and midnight squid. I'm not done with ocean fish yet, but I go to the mountain lake to catch some of the fish there, eating my toxic fish so that I can empty my inventory. I catch a walleye, but don't catch any magic bait only fish. At least I do not need the rain totem after all. At the end of the day, it turns out I have level 10 fishing. I get the pirate profession, as the extra treasure chests makes it marginally likelier to get a strange doll from fishing. Today opens with a single goal, catch the glacier fish, which is often considered the hardest fish to catch due to its movement pattern. I run to the spot where the glacier fish appears, chug a seafoam pudding, and cast my line. The first bite is the glacier fish, and I catch it first try. With that done, I walk to the beach and catch myself. Then I go to the mountain lake again, where I catch a perch and a ling cod. Then I catch the angler at the uppermost bridge of the town, as well as a tiger trout and a pike. I take a small break to sell some items to clear my inventory and donate the prehistoric scapula before going to the bridge by the museum to fish. The only fish I need at this point is a salmon, slime jack, and void salmon, which means that I technically do not need any more magic baits. I decide to stop fishing so that I can buy a bouquet from Pierre and boyfriend Shane up, as well as give him a pizza. Then I go to the mines to get an aquamarine to fulfill an item quest from Shane, but end the day without getting any. I start today grinding for the aquamarine but it only takes 2 in-game hours. Then I give it to Shane, which gets him to 10 hearts, and give him the pizza as well. At this point, he is about half a heart away from being fully maxed out, and I plan on getting that from the Luau. Then I return to the bridge by the library. It takes nearly 4 in-game hours, but I get the salmon. With fishing nearly done, I go to the island to convert taro to farm warp totems, and sell some items. Then, I decide that I don't need Iron Quest anymore, so I get the last two fish. I go to the railroad to get the Dark Talisman quest, then go to the sewers. Completing the quest requires talking to Krobus, 
Then on the way to get the Dark Talisman from the Bug Lair, I catch the Slime Jack. With the Talisman engraved in my brain, I go back to the entryway to the Witch's Swamp, catch the Void Mayonnaise, and then catch the Void Salmon, which gets me the Master Angler achievement. It turns out that if I were to do an all fish run on its own, this fish and the Slime Jack are the reason why Summer 3 is the earliest day that it can be done as it is the earliest day you have access to the railroad, and therefore the Witcher Swamp and the Bug Lair. Considering I'm getting 6 other star drops, getting all fish 7 days after the minimum day is pretty good. Now that I'm the best fisherman in Stardew Valley, I go to bed. Today is the Luau, and it turns out that the gold catfish I've been saving for item quests is enough to get the best response. Then, while waiting for the lure to open, I till tiles in the mines as a practice run for the days where I will be tilling all day, and to determine how many tiles I can till in a day, and therefore how many attempts I can expect. Once it hits midday, I go to the lure and drop my month old catfish in the soup. Delicious. Then, once Shane has the best soup of his life, I go to bed. I start by setting aside a chest just for the items for the Grange at the Stardew Valley Fair. I know what items will get me first place at this event from the Stardew Fair Helper, and the random items that I keep around always ends up enough to achieve first place. With that done, I go to the island to harvest the hot peppers, giving me 14 gold hot peppers to give to Shane once we are married. Then I go into the forge, fixing the bridge as I forgot my watering can. Once I have 20 cinder shards, I enchant my hoe with the swift enchant which increases the animation speed and thus allowing me to till more tiles in a day. With my new super hoe, I return to the mines to test how many tiles I can till with it and leave to go to bed right after midnight. Today is the day I propose. I go to the old mariner on the right side of the beach by the mermaid's pendant for 5000g and give it to Shane along with a flounder for an item quest. With the wedding set for summer 16, I decide to set up one last strategy. I buy 71 starfruit seeds from the oasis and go to the island to plant them, using my remaining sap to make basic fertilizer to increase quality. Also, I finally show the gourmand frog his melon and wheat so that I can have the farm obelisk built. The reason why I am planting starfruits is to have 50,000 G for the fair this is because the fair has a booth where you can buy tokens for 50g each. That way I can get 1000 tokens from the Grange and 1000 tokens bought so that I do not need to worry about the spinning wheel. Finally, I sell a whole lot of no longer needed items making nearly 30,000g overnight. Two days until the wedding. Two artifacts left to get. Two strange dolls to get with my super hoe. I go to the mines and get down to hoeing. It takes nearly 10 hours of non-stop hoeing and I get the green strange doll. This is actually better than I expected as I thought I'd have to retry this day over and over. But nope, first try. Once I donate the artifact, I talk to Shane and go to bed. I spend literally all day hoeing this day. 6.10am to 1.10am No strange doll I try again Starting at 6.10am again I hoe and hoe and hoe Yeah, it takes all of 35 seconds I donate the yellow strange doll Talk to Shane Harvest the sweet gem berries And go to bed Marriage day Once I have married Shane and given him his daily hot pepper, I'm done for the day, but I decide to decorate the farmhouse a bit, using the items at the top of the mines, decorations still in the museum, and some items bought from Robin. When I'm done, I go to bed. Hot pepper. Hot pepper. Hot pepper. Hot pepper. Today, Shane has hit the 12 and a half heart threshold and he gives me his star drop. Now I have access to 6 of 7 star drops, I get them all at once. I get the star drop from Shane, the star drop from Willy, 
the star drop from Old Master Cannoli, the star drop from Crobus, the star drop from Floor 100 in the Mines, and make it to the museum right as it opens and get the sixth star drop. You cannot get all seven in one day as the museum is not open when the fair is on. Now, I have literally nothing else to do for the next 22 days. That is, other than harvesting those star fruit I planted earlier. What will I do now? I interrupt this montage of my farmer doing stuff as the star fruit are ready over on Ginger Island. I harvest the star fruit, the peppers and the random seeds that are planted. For the giggles I give Demetrius his melon and Jody her cauliflower. With everything I've sold I now have 113,000 G, enough to buy the star drop outright. I buy some aquariums from Willy so that I can show off my fish in style. Back to the montage. It is fall 16 today, and with it, the Stardew Valley Fair is on. I already have the items needed to win first place at the Grange, and I have the money to buy the rest of the fair tokens to in turn buy the last star drop. This challenge was theory crafted for a long time, and in the end it turned out to be a lot easier than I expected. It took 8 days to get the nuts needed to open Key's Nut Room, when I expected it to take 14. Even better, it took 10 seconds to go from entering the nut room to getting the magic bait needed to get the last few fish, when I had planned for it taking another 14 days to make sure I get the quests I needed. Despite Fall 16 being the earliest state that you can get all star drops by, there remains a possible challenge that is more impressive, 
which is getting all star drops in 32 days. This would be done by getting every other star drop as well as every fish by summer 3, then sleeping until 4.16, getting Willy's star drop in the mail and getting the star drop in the fair. This hypothetical run would get the first 6 star drops 18 days earlier than I did in this video. The final thing to consider is how the upcoming 1.6 update will affect this challenge. I don't think that Concerned Ape will add new star drops, which means that only the requirements for each star drop could be affected. The likeliest way for this to happen would be for new artifacts to be added, or new fish to be added. But this would only make the challenge take more days if the new items are locked beyond 416 of year 1, like a year 2 plus only area, or a winter festival. Alternatively, the update could make the existing challenge easier by adding new ways of getting hard to get items like batteries, strange dolls, and trilobite fossils. Thanks for watching this video, the next one will be out next month, so keep an eye out for that.